Hello again, T-Rexers and parents. You know, Terry sometimes has to do things he isn't very fond of for eh, many different reasons. Unfortunately, just like him, we all have to do things that make us uncomfortable at times. Recently, he had to take the school bus, which is something that always makes him anxious. He doesn't like being around a lot of people for well, various reasons, as you can understand. Let's find out what happened with him, and well, I'm sure you may have had similar experiences. Your parents may want to stick around and watch this one with you, so you can tell them if you've had to deal with similar situations. They need to know so they can help and make those situations easier for you. <sighs> Terry hated riding the bus. He was always very anxious when he had to do so because the older kids that rode it, they always teased him about his tics. Today, his mother had an early appointment at work and couldn't take him to school. Terry was forced to take the big yellow cheese wagon and hope for the best. At the bus stop, he stayed away from the other kids. His friends Ozzy and Andy, they lived closer to the school, so they just walked every day. This left Terry all alone on the rare mornings as he was forced to take the bus. As the bus pulled up, he let all the other kids get on first. Then he climbed aboard and he found the first seat that he could. It was almost halfway to the back and near all the older kids. As Terry sat in his seat, he opened his notebook and started to write down some notes that he had for the presentation that he and Mr. Spackle, the school's caretaker, were putting together. He heard others behind him laughing quietly, then all of a sudden he felt a tiny sting in the back of his head. Someone had just shot him with a spitwad. One of the kids spoke up and he was really mean. Hey Twitchy, how are you going to clean that off with your tiny arms? Little T-Rex arms. Terry sat there holding back his anger and his tears. He wanted to say or do something, but he was all alone against so many others. He felt horrible that he couldn't think of anything to say, so he just sat in his seat and wrote down what had just happened. He's going to make sure that Mr. Spackle knew about it. Splat! Another spitwad hit him in the back of the head. Tears welled up in Terry's eyes at the torment that the others were causing him. They all laughed and carried on, thinking it was funny entertainment as they pestered the young lad. Splat! 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 Three more spitwads hit him in rapid fire. Terry's anger exploded as he jumped out of his seat and let out an enormous roar. The bus driver, an octopus named Miss Osgood, she'd been watching through the mirror and waiting to see if the situation would just resolve itself. When she saw Terry jump up, she immediately stopped the bus, throwing Terry off balance and pulling him to the front. The bus driver caught him. She gave him a little pat on the shoulder and said, Don't worry, little guy. I'll handle this. You, you didn't do anything wrong. She marched to the back of the bus and grabbed the three instigators by the ears and drug them right on out the door. She opened it up, and as she threw them off the bus, she scolded them. When you boys behave like mature young adults and stop picking on others who are younger than you, I might let you back on my bus but not until you write Terry and myself a sincere apology. Now get to stepping or you'll be late for school. With that, she slammed the door shut and started driving. Terry was stunned and went back to his seat. He never thought the bus driver was someone who would stand up for him. He was actually afraid of her until now. When they arrived at school, Terry waited for the others to exit the bus before he got up. He approached Miss Osgood and thanked her for sticking up for him. Don't even think about it, little buddy. I've had my eye on those bullies for a while. I knew they were close to pushing it too far. You shouldn't be afraid to ride the bus or do anything. You should talk to someone and teach them about your condition. Terry smiled and replied, Yes, ma'am. I'm already working on something with Mr. Spackle. You should see it when we give our presentation. Miss Osgood's eyes sparkled. <laughs> Mr. Spackle, he's such a great person. I'd love to come watch him. I, I mean, you guys give a speech. Feeling better, but a little awkward. Terry stepped off the bus and 
went to meet Mr. Spackle and tell him what happened on the bus. They agreed to include that in their presentation as they finished up their material. Terry was now ready and excited to share with the teachers at his school. Bullying in any form is one of the biggest causes of anxiety and fear in people. It's also one of the lowest forms of cowardice behavior that people can exhibit, in my opinion. Nobody should ever be subjected to intimidation or hate for any reason. If you see anything like that going on, whether it's toward yourself or others, don't let it continue. By speaking up and exposing that behavior, you're saving yourself and many others a world of grief. Don't let yourself get caught up in the situation and act out of anger. I know it's hard to do, but that doesn't help solve the problem. If you need to, talk to a teacher or another adult who is the authority at the moment. If they don't do anything, keep going up to another person in a position to do something. And always, always tell your parents what's going on. If they don't know, they can't help. So, okay guys, it's time for that fist bump. And this is Megalodon saying bye for now. Later, tater.